All right, thanks for watching. And because it's my birthday today, I'd like to tell you about a fun problem called the birthday paradox. So here's the setting. Suppose you're at the party. I guess, let me correct that. Suppose you're at the Zoom meeting. Party like it's 2020. And there are N people at the party. So N people at the party. And the question is, what is the probability or what is the likelihood that at least two people two people share the same birthday share the same here is a paradox and i like you to think about this a little bit how many people do you think you would need in order for this probability to be one half? The paradox is you actually don't need a lot of people and I'll show you why. So let's calculate this probability and just a couple of assumptions. We assume that each birthday is equally likely, which is not always true. And also, I'm sorry about people who were born on February 29th you're very special to me, but you're excluded in this problem. All right, so in order to solve this problem, let's solve the opposite. So let's calculate the likelihood that no one shares the same birthday. So let's calculate the probability that no one shares the same birthday. Birthday. Now, what is a probability? Remember, it's the ratio. Now, what is a probability? Remember, it's just the ratio between the number of favorable outcomes and the number of total outcomes. So first of all, let's calculate the number of total outcomes or the number of all the possibilities. So remember, you have N people at the party. Now for the first person, how many choices of birthdays are there? Well, 365, because that person is born in either one of the 365 days. For the second one, also 365. For the third one, also 365. And for the last one, also 365. So in the end, we have 365 times 365, dot, 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 times 365, and this n times because we have N people. Now the question is, what about the favorable incomes? So remember, favorable means no one shares any birthdays. Well, for the first person, we still have 365 choices. Because for any of those choices, the other ones will be determined. Now, if the first person is born on a, a certain day, you just need to make sure that the second person is not born on the same day, which leaves us with 364 choices. For the third person, you need to make sure that that person is not born on any of those two other days, which gives us 363 choices all the way up to um, 365 minus all the remaining people, which is n minus 1. So 365 minus n minus 1, which gives you at least a probability that no one shares the same birthday. 365 times 664 up to 365 minus n minus 1, which if you want, you can just simplify this cancels out, and in the end, I believe, you're just left with 364 over 365, and then um, you know, 363 times over 365, 
all the way up to 365 minus n minus 1 over 365. So again, that's the answer of the opposite event. So the answer to our original question of mm, what is the probability that at least two people share the same birthday is just one minus that. So one minus 364 over 365, 363 over 365, dot, 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 up to 365 minus n minus 1 over 365. Which, if you want, you can write in terms of factorials, but in this case, you don't really have to. And again, you would think, as I said, that this number is very small, but it turns out this number is very big. And in fact, let me show you a couple of values. And now let me draw you a little table showing how this answer depends on the number of people in the room. So again, the probability that uh, at least two people share the same birthday as a function of the number of people in the room. And also I wanna show you how cool that is, how to draw tables. So if you're one person, the chance of at least two people sharing the same birthday, it's either 0% or 100%. If you're a glass half full, a glass half empty kind of person. And if there are 10 people, the chance of at least two of them having the same birthday is already 11.7%. So one out of nine, which is pretty big. And remember the question I asked at the beginning, how many people would you need in order for that probability to be 50%? It turns out you only need 23 people. How surprising is this? Now, <laughs> just a couple more fun numbers. If you have 100 people, what is the chance? It's 99.99997%. And since it's my birthday, I'm allowed to waste your time. So what if it's 200 people? What's that probability? So pi am stuff posting as its best. So 99.999999999999. Nein, das gibt's doch nicht. 999999999. No, 998%. So you see how likely this is? And of course, if you have 366 people by the pigeonhole principle, so that's my pigeon, uh, the answer is 100%. Right? Because you have more people than birthdays. So you're definitely likely that at least two of them have the same birthday. And in fact, let me show you a cute graph I found on Wikipedia. I, know, I, I filmed this before my birthday. Ooh, um, what was it? Uh, yes, this one. You see how like how quickly it grows to one, and in fact, that's the whole point. And again, here at twenty-three, the probability is at least 0.5. So you're probably like, okay, I know all of this already. So let me show you something you may not know. So in particular, let me show you how to approximate this because in, in practice, this is horrible to calculate. Well, first of all, notice we can write this as one minus um, one minus one over 365. because This becomes 364 over 365. This is one minus two over 365, all the way up to one minus n minus one over 365. Now, why am I doing that? Because remember something you may have learned in calculus, which is the Taylor expansion of e to the x, which is simply one plus x plus x squared over two plus dot, dot, dot. So in particular, if x is very small, which at least is here, one over 365 is very small, you can approximate this with one plus x. And so in particular, um, e to the x, is roughly one plus x. And I know, ha ha ha, this means e is roughly two. 
get over it. Uh, but here it's very useful because then what is one minus one over 365? Well, here x is minus one over 365. So this becomes e of minus one over 365. So this probability then becomes the following. Let me just double check here. This probability becomes one minus e of minus one over 365. Here, you let x be minus two over 365. So e of minus two over 365, all the way up to e of minus n minus one over 365. And then the beautiful thing is this simplifies. So again, this is one minus e of minus one over 365 times one plus two plus dot 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 plus n minus one. And does it smell like Gauss? Yes, it smells like Gauss. So we get e of minus one over 365 times n minus one times n over two which becomes one minus e of minus n minus one times n. Now two times 365 is not 750, if you know what I mean, it's 730. <laughs> no. You know, I already sold my soul with this. Let me <laughs> lose my dignity completely. If n is large, n minus one is roughly n. So this becomes e of minus n squared over 730. So yes, for my birthday, I became an applied mathematician. And in particular, the probability, the probability that you want is approximated by this. And I just want to show you how, um, how good of an approximation this is, because I saw the picture and I was quite surprised. So again, let's go back to this. Ta-da! You see, this is mm, the, the black thing is the actual probability and the red thing is the approximation. So it's awesome. And yeah, I, I do this right before my birthday. I have to hurry up before it's midnight. And so now going back one more thing, because I know some of you are narcissists and I want to emphasize this does not calculate the probability of someone having the same birthday as you. It calculates the probability of at least two people having the same birthday. If you want to know what the probability of um, someone having the same birthday of you is, well, it's again similar to before. So what's the, suppose you are here, again, let's say not part of the group, and you have all the people, okay? then again, probability is favorable outcomes over uh, all the outcomes. The outcomes are 365 times 365 again, and Again, what is, for this, we need to do the complementary uh, event. So let's calculate the probability that no one has the same birthday as you, which gives 364 choices for the first person, 364 choices for the second person, up to 364 choices to the nth person. Okay, so this becomes, 364 times 364, because again, it doesn't matter if both of those have the same birthday, because it just matters that it doesn't have the same birthday as you. So the opposite probability is 364 over 365 to the n. So the probability of someone having the same birthday as you, it's one minus that, which is very different from the previous answer. And in fact, let me show you why they're different. Remember for 23 people, that answer was for the first problem, the answer was 50%. So 50% likelihood that at least two people share the same birthday. But if the world is centered around you, that answer is just 6.1%. 
So there's only a 6.1% chance that someone has the same birthday as you. And in fact, if you want to know when is this probability 50%, well, there would have to be at least 253 people, you know, which is way much bigger than 23. And in fact, to conclude this and to celebrate my birthday, let me show you the graph of the two functions. Let's see. Yeah. Yes. So you see that was the original graph with you know the probability of at least two people sharing the same birthday. And this is the probability of someone having the same birthday as you. Okay. Just saying. Think of others for once. All right, and with that said, happy birthday to me and happy birthday to all the people who share the same birthday as me. <laughs> and I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.